Hello YouTube, this is that Yi guy. Today I have for you a video on 5 ways you can prepare for the Vault 10 content that we're getting soon. As with all my videos, there's going to be timestamps down below, very clearly labeled, so you can only look for the information that you're interested in. And I'm going to attach this very long type up uh, with all the details where you can actually find the information. The first topic is preparing for the actual vault in itself. The normal mode is going to be 1415 and the hard mode is going to be 1445. If you don't have the gear score for it right now, if you don't have it when the time it comes, don't stress out. It's going to be around for a long time and it's just something to work towards. But even before you get there, you can do other things to repair. So in terms of engravings, you will want to I have ideally three times three engravings that are gonna be very meta and you can definitely do it for very cheap. I've done it for multiple characters and I have a video covering this specific topic. For most people, you can just spend 35 fions and 1K gold to get three times three extremely meta engravings such as grudge, cursed doll, etc and the correct stats. In terms of stats, you also want to make sure your stats is absolutely correct. This is going to be way more important than engraving. If your stats are wrong, it doesn't matter if you have four times three engravings, you're going to suffer in the raid because your effectiveness will be way too low. In terms of cards, there are multiple ways to go about it. You could use the sets that you have right now. Uh, whatever it is, you can use tanky sets, you can use uh, well meet again and something else. Or if you can try to use Lost Wing Clip, especially if you have a bonus. That is because Voltan and the future Legion Commander raids, whenever they do elemental damage, it will always be dark damage. So that's why the dark damage reduction will be useful. And having the Lost Wing Clip 12 piece awakening will give you more crit rate, which is going to be really good. If you are missing just Syria to complete the awakening, you could follow my video uh, that's going to be on the Wandering Merchant, how to set up the Discord uh, to get report items, to get card copies for awakening. And I have a separate card guide that covers how you can get your first copy of the other cards by doing achievements and everything else. Now comes the most important advice. Vault 10 is not going to be the same as Argos because Argos you can pub and you still do pretty well or just find a random group. But for Vault 10, it's going to be much less likely. In this guide, I also link to another content creator, uh, Phenom KK. He posted a very nice written guide on Vault 10 itself. There are a lot of video guides, but sometimes a written guide is better. One main mechanic that's going to be different we haven't seen before at all in the Western release is the sidereal abilities. Now these are abilities with very big impact on the actual fight. Someone who uses it correctly and times it perfectly is going to decrease the difficulty of the raid by a huge amount. Now only the raid leader can trigger and select and all of these are skill shots. So you're going to need someone who can do this effectively and hopefully every week you're going to have the same leader. So because of that, I recommend you find a static group. Now there's a Lost Arts Discord. Uh, I put a link down in the documents and I'll also put it down in the description below. But you can join that Discord and simply find the link here. So once you select the role and pick the region, you're going to see the chats for that region. You want to look for a group and set up a static group. This is going to make the whole experience much, much simpler. So definitely look into that and highly recommend it. Originally, I was going to spend a long time talking about the rewards and the set effects and everything like this. I included St. Tone's translation of the different set effects so you can look at the different legendary and relic gear. But once I did the research, I realized that we actually don't know the rewards we're going to get from Valton because right now this is what Korea gets in terms of reward. But since the release of Vault 10 in Korea, this has been changed multiple times in a very drastic way. Because you used to get less resources, you used to even not get a specific resource that's going to make a huge difference. 
and you used to get way more gold. So I realized that any information I try to give you based on what Korea has right now is very likely to be wrong. And because there's no way for you to get enough to craft a set bonus in just one week, there's zero reason to rush to put out this content and risk being wrong and misleading you guys. So I'm going to wait until Vault 10 actually comes out and then I can use all the notes I prepared ahead of time to give you a very accurate and hopefully very helpful guide on choosing the sets and all this related content. Now the second thing I want to talk about is going to be rest energy. So a lot of people have been asking me how should I prepare in terms of rest energy? Should I not do anything five days in advance just to run the higher tier content? So I actually found this thread on Reddit uh, by, I can't pronounce his username, I'm sorry, but here's the username and the direct link to his post. In this post, he gave us an example of how much rewards you could get from running Rested Chaos Dungeon and Rested Guardian Raid. Now this is good reference for us to have. Based on this information, my suggestion is if you are 1415, just don't save rest energy on the Chaos Dungeons, only do it for Guardians. And of course, you start doing this on the 14th of May because that's five days ahead of time. If you are 1445, you should save both Chaos and Guardian energy because you're gonna break even in terms of rewards and have a chance to get the better stuff such as the Gale Wind at Legendary and the Relic accessories. The third one is going to be engravings. So I already covered what you need to do Vault 10, but after Vault 10, the math will be different. You're gonna get accessories that can give you five to one engraving and three to another. And this is gonna be different. I listed an example of how you can potentially go for five times three engravings after Relic comes out. And hopefully this is clear. I will have more videos on this in the future. But one thing you can do to prepare is to keep an eye out for something you can take to plus 12. So in the example I provided, having a plus 12 engraving will make the whole process of trying to get five times three much easier. It is very expensive to get the meta engraving to plus 12 and we don't know if the price will go up or down in the future. But for me personally, I already have multiple engravings on the watch list so that if I see the price dip down, I will start buying them up one by one. The fourth thing is gonna be stronghold and consumables. So high level stronghold will let you craft the bigger potions that let you get nine uses out of it. So right now, it's actually not a bad idea to just buy them, but if you have your stronghold level up, you can potentially craft it yourself. And while it looks like it's not worth it to craft yourself, there are certain things you can do to be more efficient at crafting. So you can have, if your manor is high enough level, uh, certain buildings equipped it and certain outfits equipped it. So for example, I mentioned potions, you could have potentially Yule if her trust is high enough she'll be in your hideout. So you can actually equip this outfit and you can see that crafting action energy consumed, uh, it's gonna be less crafting times decrease. That's gonna make it faster to craft. And there are certain things, certain buildings, uh, such as the Rohando one, for example, they'll increase a great success chance of potions. This one increases different things. And ultimately you can stack the great success bonus of whatever you want to craft and if it triggers great success, it will give you double the yield. So that's something you could potentially look into. Regardless, leveling up your stronghold is gonna be a really good idea. Another thing I don't see often enough is that you can actually craft these food items in your stronghold and you can actually use a food buff. I, I don't see anyone using food buff, but they are actually really good. For example, you can get plenty amount of stats and combat resource recovery for just eating this food. And every time you craft, you get 10 foods. So each one on average only costs you several gold. So this is super worth it. You use it, you get the bonus for 20 minutes 
or until you die. So if you keep wiping, potentially you're gonna eat multiple, but at only a couple gold each, it's super worth it. So I would say get in the habit of using consumables. My Argos group all uses food and we smash out the content much faster. It's noticeably better if everyone is buffed. Now the last point is gonna be Chaos Line Entry. So this is the token of protection. Chaos Line is the content you can see in South Vern. Now, right now you can only do normal, but hard mode will have rewards such as 200 Greater Honor Leap Stones you can buy one time on the 1415 character and there's gonna be thousands of stones. That's potentially gonna help you push uh, towards Vault 10 hard mode. So that's something to look into. If you don't need to spend the tokens right now, you could save them because you only get two per week and normal and hard will use the same tokens but give you different currencies. Hopefully this is helpful to some of you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comment down below. I will be streaming actually tonight after I put out this video. I'm gonna try to run. Uh, I'm gonna try to run all my Abyss and Argos in the same night. So this weekend I'll be streaming actually on Twitch a little bit because it's not gonna be Lost Ark. It's gonna be Path of Exile. Uh, still, feel free to come hang out and ask any question, even if it's Lost Ark question. I'm just gonna have a relaxing time, just chat with people and hang out with some old friends. So, yep, yeah, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.